Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are discussing the game engines used to make the most popular games of 2019. Now, this is according to a couple of qualifiers. This is according to Steam 250's algorithm for what the most popular games were, and it's kind of a combination of upvotes and sales, I think. It's kind of a weird, arbitrary contract, and I don't really care, to be honest. This is not actually my work. This is coming from our game dev. This is the work of WX3 Labs, uh, and we're just kind of going to go through it. What he's done is he's broken down this top 50 list However, it was obtained. It was actually, again, taken from uh, Steam 250. Uh, I have no idea how legit or how their algorithm works, uh, but it's based on a number of different factors. This kind of gives you the best games according to game reviews and scores and total sales and so on. And if you look at the 2019 results, well, number three is hentai Nazis. So let's let's take this with a grain of salt. But we're basing this off of the 2019 list. And here, you're actually going to see a fair number of titles that you have definitely heard of. So I'm not going to argue any of these are actually the top 50, uh, but it does give us a cool basis to start from. And what he's done is researched into each one of these to find out what game engine were used to make them. And there are some interesting results here. So basically, this is the top 50 arbitrarily figured out games on Steam in 2019, and then the underlying game engine behind them. So we're going to do a quick run through this list, and then we're going to quickly talk about a couple of the game engines mentioned here, because there's some that might shock you. And you'll notice that number one and at number 50, we've got LibGDX. Now, LibGDX was actually the game engine that I first started this channel around. That is, the first video tutorial series I did was for LibGDX, and I've always had a very fond spot in my heart for LibGDX. It's always kind of reminded me of Mono Game, which we'll get to in a few minutes. Uh, but it's cool to see it continues to be used in a number of quite successful titles, even if it's a small Java framework. And it's, um, yeah, Java. It's the only time you're going to see Java on this particular list is with LibGDX. And, and you know what? It is pretty much one of the only times not called Minecraft where you see Java used as a programming language for successful games. So a lot of the most successful games that are written in Java were written using LibGDX. And number one was Slay the, Smire, the Spire. It's not the Smire. Um, and then we got the number two here is made by Game Maker Studio 2. So it's interesting to see very, very indie on that end of the framework. Now, do keep in mind, the way that this list seemed to work out is a lot of AAA titles don't seem to make it onto the list for whatever reason. Either they're being downvoted heavily or their algorithm on this Steam 250 site really skews towards indies. We get some um, AAA titles in here, but not many. And in that case, we would skew more towards the Unreal Engine kind of side of the fence. And we'd see more titles from CryEngine or maybe Lumberyard, but I doubt it, um, or a lot more in-house stuff. So this does skew a little on the indie side of things, just forewarned. Um, but yeah, Game Maker Studio made it to number two on the list. We've got our first custom engine here in terms of Resident Evil 2. Now, there's actually a name for Capcom's engine, but we'll just go with custom for this kind of scenario. Again, this is not my research. This was done by somebody else. Uh, Risk of Rain is the first Unity title on here. Risk of Rain 2, that is. And then we've got Hades, mono game. Now, Supergiant Games, the makers of, let's see, Bastion, Transistor, Hades, and so on, they've always used kind of a modified version of mono game, which itself is based on XNA. We'll get back to that in a few moments. But all of their titles keep kind of showing mono game up in the list. But mono game is pretty successful in the indie space. One that is a little shocking is Click Team Fusion keeps showing up here. Now, Click Team Fusion uh, was mostly famous for the Five Nights at Freddy's games. Uh, I've done a hands-on with almost all these engines, to be honest, but uh, Click Team Fusion's uh, continued conclusion is a little shocking, but it was used to make Bad That Is You. Uh, and then we got Unity starting to show up here with Muse, Dash, and Tabs. I don't actually know either game, to be honest. Game Maker Studio makes another appearance here with Tahu Luna Knights. Uh, Unreal Engine 4 gets its first appearance here with Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. So again, you see we're skewing more towards the indie titles. There are a ton of Unreal Engine games that were made, like the um, Mortal Kombat was built off of a version of Unreal Engine 3. Um, it's thousands and thousands of shooters out there that are made using Unreal Engine that aren't showing up on this list. So again, take that part with a grain of salt because I don't know why they aren't included on this list, but they're not. Same with uh, uh, none of the Call of Duties or um, those kind of titles made it here. Now, they might not be on Steam anymore, so that may be part of it, but who knows? Uh, so now we're getting back into the Unity land here. So we got My Friend Pedro, Oxygen Not Included, uh, People Playground, Beat Saber, Unheard, A Short Hike, Kind Words, uh, all made the list. Noita, a game I've never heard of, was written in a custom C++ based game engine. Unreal 4 is back on the list here with Spyro. And then we've got Unity showing up for Streets of Rogue, which was um, prototyped using Construct 2. 
Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. They're guessing at Visual Novel, but it could be just an in-house language. Nobody knows. Uh, Superland is Unreal Engine 4. Devil May Cry 5 is another in-house engine, which I actually thought Devil May Cry 5 was an Unreal Engine game, but I, again, not my list, not my data. But don't be surprised if that one ends up being Unreal. Um, Nova Drift, Game Maker Studio 2. Dungeon Munchies is Unity. Uh, Mindustry is LibGDX again, so bravo to you, LibGDX. You keep soldiering on there. Uh, Plague Tale Innocence is Custom C++ Engine. Disco Elite was a Unity, as was One Figure Death Punch 2. Exception was custom. Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice is showing up as Fire Engine. Now, Fire Engine is kind of like this thing that Sony provides people kind of as a starting point. I actually think it was, it's partially at least by the guys that make Uncharted, if not used to make Uncharted, but that's why it keeps showing up. It's kind of like a a scaffold of a game engine that you can start building your own stuff on. It's been used to make quite a few games, though. Um, Unreal Engine 4 was a medieval. Unity was used to make Gorn. Hyperspace Outlaw was Construct. Islanders was Unity. Yakuza was a custom engine. Five Nights at Freddy's, which was the one that made uh, Click Team Fusion famous, apparently switched over to Unreal Engine 4 for their most recent version. Uh, Reventure is Unity. Halo and Space Engine are both custom. Uh, Don't Escape 4 is another Unity engine. Forger is Game Maker Studio 2. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is an Unreal 4 game. Um... To, I don't know, is I don't know. Aokana is a visual novel, they're guessing. Bug Fables is another Unity title. Smile for Me, A Dance of Fire and Ice, and Sayonara Wild Hearts are all Unity. And then LibGDX shields up one more time with Wild Wilder Myth. So you're going to see a couple of shocking things on this list, and some pretty much predictable. 22, um, so almost half of the games were made using Unity. Um, we got good representation of other engines. We got Mono Game in here, LibGDX, and so on. So it's kind of showing that the game engine you choose, especially with an indie title, doesn't really matter that much for its long-term success. Although I am surprised to see no Godot title showing up on this list for um, 2019. I'd be interested to see what happens in 2020, because there is a ton more in the pipe than there ever was before. So when we see this again next year, it will be interesting to see what happens in that regard. If we'll have anything breaking the top 50, at least as this top 50 was determined. The President of C Game Maker continues to have four titles in here. And I think the one that I find most shocking again is that Click Team Fusion continues to make titles. So you've heard of Unreal Engine at this point. And you've heard of Unity for sure. So let's do a quick rundown of a couple of the other engines on this list. So we've got, again, Click Team Fusion 2. This one is it's shocking to me, not because it's a bad engine or anything like that. It's just that we've been waiting for Click Team Fusion 3 for like five or six years now. There's been no development or nothing new on Click Team Fusion two and a half for a couple of years now. Um, but it continues to soldier on. It's a commercial engine, costs about a hundred bucks, I think, for the base model. I got it through a Humble Bundle a couple years ago. It uses this flowchart style programming uh, to make things work. It's a lot like Construct in the way that it puts things together, uh, but very much a 2D focused game engine. And as you see, you can check it out on Steam. Now, I did do a hands-on with it, so if you want to learn more about it, just, just search for uh, Construct 2.5, and you'll find probably the first video link is Game From Scratch. Check that out. Next up, we've got Mono Game. I actually did a full tutorial series on Mono Game. It was XNA that got me really into indie programming again, and then uh, Microsoft shot themselves in both feet, and then Mono Game kind of picked up the thing. So Mono Game is XNA now. Um, and it continues to get used to make a number of quite successful titles, especially in the indie space. But again, Supergiant games are really leading the way. But you've got other titles like Celeste. Um, I believe... Oh, no, that was Hacks. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised that didn't make the list. What about... Um, oh, damn it. Why is this name not coming to me? Uh, the one made with Hacks this year where you kind of as an amorphous blob trying to fight your way through things. I would have thought that would be the top 50 list. Anyways, um, yeah, Model Games have been used to make a number of different titles you've definitely heard of. It is a primarily C-sharp programming language, and it is more of a framework, of course, than it is a full-blown game engine, but very well uh, battle-tested at this point. LibGDX, this is the OG. This is the one that got me in doing video tutorials in the first place, and I still love LibGDX. It's pretty mature at this point. There's not a lot of new features coming, but again, it's a solid, stable cross-platform game framework, so what more does it need once it's ready? Um, so that's where LibGDX is now. I think it's mostly getting maintenance releases and small community ads at this point. The lead developer on it has moved on to other things years and years ago, but it, it continues to do the job, and as you saw, number one on the list was Slay the Spire, which is a game I really have to get around to playing after all the recommendations I keep getting about it. And then we've got Wahahaha, Game Maker Studio two or two point now nah, there's still two uh, this one is one of those ones game maker studio has been around for like 15 years now i did a hands-on with game maker studio 2 if you want to check that out again just google it you'll find i think in the first first or second on the list again um 
And you, this guy just keeps making indie titles that you've probably heard of. So we've got um, titles like... Um, I actually don't play a lot of indies, if I'm honest, but uh, Hyper Light Drifter was definitely big, Nidog 2. Um, it just it keeps going and going and going. A lot of times I credit games to Game Maker Studio 2 that end up being like a, an independent engine. So I'm not even going to guess at this point in time. But as you can see, just by going through their, their list of published titles, Game Maker Studio 2 is still going strong. It's a commercial game engine as well. It's about $100 for the base, and then you pay about $100 to $200 for additional platforms if you want to check it out. Uh, there's two ways of programming. There's kind of their visual way, and then they've got their own game maker script, uh, kind of like a cross between C and basic, I think you could say. Again, I've done a hands-on with it if you want a little bit more details of what it's all about. But as you see, there are like an absolute ton of titles continuing to get shipped using Game Maker Studio. So good on them staying relevant in this age and day, uh, especially you know when you're competing with the likes of Unity on one end and then Godot for completely free on the other. The fact that they continue to find success, good for them. And then we've got, oh yeah, this guy. Now this is actually a good uh, representation of what we were dealing with. Uh, because I'm trying to go to develop.scee.net. That's uh, Sony Computing of Europe. And they've done something called Fire Engine. And it's been around for years and years and years. Like this was first launched, oh, 2008? Yeah, 2008. And it's been used to make a number of different games. It's almost like a scaffolding of game tools and, and engines. It, it's been the basis for making a lot of derived game engines from Fire Engine. But as you'll see, Fire Engine, which is completely free uh, and it's designed for Sony platforms. You see here like the Vita, the PlayStation 3, the PlayStation 4, and so on. But you can also make Windows games, Android games, and iOS games using this engine and even Switch. Um, and you're gonna see some of the titles that have been made by it, you've definitely heard of. Colin McRae's Dirt, um, Race Driver Grid, Rugby Lead Live, uh, Hotline Miami, Again, that's one of those ones that I would have given credit as a game maker game. I always do that. Um, so yeah, Dive Kick was another big one that came out of Diskia 4. And then this one is somehow tied to the um, Uncharted games, but I don't know the exact details. It was also spun off to make the Ego game engine, uh, which is Codemasters, and then the Silk engine, which is uh, for the Silverfall games and others. So um, Fire Engine, it's kind of an interesting project. And the reason why we started with that uh, not found page is because, well, it's not found anymore. So I don't know what the current status of Fire Engine is, but it somehow seems to still be making games from it. So, And then the last one we got on the list is Construct2. Construct2 is a lot like Click Team Fusion, just for HTML5. It takes a very visual approach to designing your game. Uh, as you can see right there, and this flowchart style programming. I've done a hands-on with it too, so I'm not gonna get into a ton more detail. They did something kind of controversial with their move to Construct2 is they moved to entirely browser-based workflow, and that was a polarizing decision, I guess we could say. But anyways, that is the list, and that is some of the engines that showed up on the list. Uh, let me know what you're shocked by seeing here. First off, let me know if you think that the list is completely bunk in the first place. I think even if the list is bunk, it was games that were quite popular in Steam in 20. 19 and a breakdown of the game engines that were used to make them, which I found interesting enough to have this conversation anyways. But I am kind of shocked to see a couple of exclusions. Uh, that one hacks title whose name is not coming to me, and damn it, I'm going to Google it now. There we go. Dead Cells. I would have thought Dead Cells would have been on that list. It was a 2019 game. It did really well, and it was actually made uh, using the Hacks programming language and the Heaps game engine. And I'm kind of shocked Hacks and Heaps didn't make the list at least once, because you know what? You got... Actually, these wouldn't be this year. Northgard, I don't know if that was this year or not, so Dead Cells was probably the only opportunity. But Dead Cells was awesome. I played that game for dozens and dozens and dozens of hours. So... That's the one thing that I didn't make the list I'm a little shocked at. I'm so also surprised that a Godot title hasn't made the list yet. But then again, there's a ton more in the works right now for uh, 2020 than there was in 2019. So we'll be interested to see what happens next year. But yeah, nonetheless, an interesting list. I thought I would have a discussion about it. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.